all the degrees. <laughs> yeah, it says I'm absent. <laughs> uh, yep. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is 6 p.m. Uh, we'll call to order the uh, Sauk County Board of Supervisors. Hopefully everybody's logged in on their tablets. I do not see any public here, but in case I'm wrong, if you did want to speak during public comment and you are a member of the public, we do have slips you need to bring up front. But again, I don't see any members of the public here this evening. So uh, it is 6 p.m. The meeting's called to order. Do we? First, we need to make sure everybody's logged in. Is everybody logged in on your buttons? This Scanlon's is going to be late. Oh, and Dr. Pepper's not here. I think I might have known about that. <laughs> it's been one of those weeks. It's only Tuesday. <laughs> All right, can't wait. All right, uh, I, I think we have everybody with their tablets on at this time. Uh, has the meeting been properly noticed? It sure has. All right, let's take roll call. And I'm absent and I'm not even here. There we go. I think you can go ahead and click it. Scan one. Yeah, everybody's in that's here, so. Okay, so we have 28 supervisors uh, present. One, I believe, is excused. One that is on his way. And one that who hasn't been seated at this time. So we have a quorum. Uh, item number three, invocation and pledge of allegiance. Supervisor Dietrich, who did we call on this month? Supervisor Ebro. Supervisor Ebro, you have the floor. I should say vice. Does history truly repeat? In 1921, just 100 years ago, Americans had become increasingly weary and confused about their future. They were experiencing foreign entanglements, seemingly endless World War I shortages and economic disruptions, widespread labor disputes, violent strikes, millions of deaths from Spanish flu and lingering quarantines, and cities aflame with race riots and the hysteria of the first Red Scare. Warren Harding, the new president, had run his campaign from his front porch in Ohio. He promised a return to normalcy and a renewed focus on an American first approach to foreign policy. His inaugural speech painted his picture of what was needed. America's present need is not heroics, but healing. Not nostrums, but normalcy. Not revolution, but restoration. Not agitation, but adjustment not surgery, but serenity, not the dramatic, but the dispassionate, not experiment, but balance. He went on, the world needs to be reminded that all human ills are not curable by legislation and that quantity of statutory enactment and excess of government offer no substitute for the quality of citizenship. The problems of maintained civilization are not to be solved by a transfer of responsibility from citizenship to government and no eminent page in history was ever drafted by the standards of mediocrity. Moreover, no government is worthy of the name which is directed by influence on the one hand and moved by intimidation on the other. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, Thank you, Lynn, that was very nice. Okay, that brings us up to item number four, the appointment of County Board Supervisory District number nine. Uh, first of all, let me start by saying I somehow managed to inform uh, Mr. Anderson that the meeting starts at 6.30, so his non-appearance at this time is on me and not him. Uh, what I would like to do, though, is um, uh, and, and I know we're not to the agenda, but we can consider this when we adopt it. 
uh, go ahead and discuss the appointment of uh, Mr. Anderson and then uh, just administer the oath uh, at such time as he arrives. So if that'd be okay. And at this point, I am uh, proposing or putting forward to the board uh, Mike Anderson from Reedsburg uh, to fill the remainder term of, uh, <laughs> I was gonna say Tommy Lee, but it would be um, the guy who didn't take his chair, uh, Craig. <laughs> Craig Ronschweig. All right, so I, I have that on the floor. Is there a motion to accept the appointment? We have a motion by Shell, second by Supervisor Regal. Is there any discussion on the motion at this time? Seeing none, all in favor, uh, you may vote at this time. You can put, cast a vote yes to appoint him for. Uh, is there somebody in the queue? Why is my lights aren't lighting up, people? Thank you. Supervisor Dare? I'm just curious, who is he? What, what did we know? So uh, let, let me, So we only had two people apply for it. Of, one was Tommy Lee, and, and um, he provided me no context. The other was Mike Anderson. Uh, Mike has been a longtime resident of the county. I've actually known Mike myself since about 2008. Uh, he's lived, he was born and raised in the Wani Walk area. He uh, was a real estate agent in uh, Rock Springs for some time, and now he's working uh, for a transportation company out of Reedsburg. Uh, Mike has, uh, has lived there for a long time. He drives uh, a lot of J1 students around as a volunteer, and uh, he was interested in this position, and outside of Tommy, he's the only other one. And based on conversations I've had with Tommy, and I know he was interested in it, I felt this was the best selection for the residents of that community. You bet. getting used to these new screens. I don't know which one I'm supposed to touch. <laughs> this screen is supposed to be over here. That's what happened to me. Okay, so seeing no other discussion at this time, you may vote on the recommendation at this time. Uh, we're ready to go ahead and vote now. <coughs> we have 28 in favor with uh, one supervisor absent and excused. One Supervisor on his way and, uh, well, a vacant seat, but we will congratulate Mr. Anderson when he gets here. And uh, again, if it's all right with the board, we'll administer his oath when he arrives. Brings us up to item number six, uh, motion to adopt the agenda. Is there a motion? Motion by Supervisor Spencer, second by Supervisor Rigo. Uh, again, I would just point out that we are going to veer from our uh, agenda at some point when Mr. Anderson arrives. Is there any discussion on the agenda at this time? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. And item number seven, the minutes of the previous meeting. Do we have a motion to accept the minutes from the previous? I'm sorry. I don't it's not in the queue, so we'll take a voice motion. Voting by Klitsky, second by, second by Prosser. Any discussion on the minutes as presented? Please note that the Supervisor Scanlon has arrived. Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Item number eight, general consent agenda items. We have before us Executive and Legislative Committee Resolution 64, 2022, to honor Jeff Jelinek for over 15 years of service. That's on page four in your packets. We have a motion by Supervisor Spencer, second by Supervisor Rigo, is there any discussion on the? Oh, it didn't change. I'm waiting for the machine to catch up. All right, so let's do this by voice. <laughs> is there, a, is there a motion? It's on there. On ours, it is. But it's, no, not on it's not on ours. Yeah. Yeah, it is on mine. Yeah, 64 2022. So it didn't clear. Oh, you, you wouldn't have it because your buttons went away because somebody motioned, somebody second, so it's not an available option anymore. I'm guessing. Yeah. Let's watch it. But you're saying you didn't push your button. I didn't push the button. Didn't push the button. Never, 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 never cleared. Okay. Never cleared. For the next one, let's really pay attention. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Let's really pay attention. Don't really pay attention now, just on the next one. 
<laughs> okay, well, so you all good with your motions and your seconds? Okay, any other, any other unusual discussion going into this right now? <laughs> Seeing none, all in favor of uh, resolution honoring Jeff Jelinek, please signify by trying to vote in the th tablet and see what happens. It's a voice vote. It's a voice vote. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, motion carried. We'll get there, folks. All right, item number nine. We do not have any scheduled appearances this evening. That brings us to item number 10. Uh, I do not see any public comment. If that is changed, wave your hand. So we will move on to item number 11. We have communications. Um, I don't have Graniscus up, so if there's any new ones, you'll have to holler at me. We have a letter from Representative Pocan regarding the Man Mound National Historical Landmark. And technically, it's not a letter. It is a beautiful letter with a plaque. It's a fancy letter. Um, and it says, Dear Sauk County Historical Society, please accept my wordest greetings and sincerest graduations on the unveiling of the new interpretive panels for the Man Mound National Historic Park. And it goes on from there. So thank you uh, for uh, Representative Pocan. Are, are you, what are we supposed to do with this? Give it to the Queen? Beautiful. <laughs> All right. We also have an uh, email from Jerry Burkett, Vilas County Board Chair, regarding levy limits. A letter uh, from Rob Nelson, the city of uh, Baraboo Mayor, regarding ATV UTV Highway Committee proposal, and a letter from George Strendran regarding service excellence. And I assume that was for Tony, right? If I remember that. Actually, for one of his staff. For one of his staff, yep. Uh, were there any other correspondence that I'm not talking about? Okay. On to item number 12, uh, we have appointments. Uh, first, the I'm, I'm going to take these together. And I, do I do Jed separately? Or can we do them all as one? OK, so we have appointments, item number 12. First, the Sauk County Board of Adjustment. Jennifer uh, Evert, new, Evert, new appointment citizen member, three-year term, expiring 6-30-2025. We also have Sauk County Library Board. Uh, this is a switch the next two, uh, talking to Supervisor Chrysler and Supervisor Thielen. Uh, they're switching their roles, uh, so Joel becomes the primary on the Sauk County li Library Board with uh, Tim being the alternate. <clears throat> Note that Dr. Pepper has arrived. Um, and then for the South Central Library Board, uh, Supervisor Thielen becomes the uh, primary with uh, Joel Chrysler becoming the alternate. Uh, their terms uh, remain unchanged. And then we have from the families comes first comprehensive community services coordinating committee. Uh, Hillary Schrader, new appointment citizen member. Dennis Luther, new appointment citizen member. Renee Baker, new appointment citizen member. Uh, those are two year terms expiring on 6 18 24. I'm going to take those, well, I guess we have all appointments in the queue. Last but not least, uh, the appointment of Sauk County Emergency Management Director, Jed Seidel. Um, Mr. Miller, would you like to speak to that appointment? Yes, sir. Let me find your button. You're on. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, <clears throat> I, I will be recommending Jed uh, to the Emergency Management Director position. We had over 20 applicants for the position, which I'm thrilled right now. We typically get four to seven, and we had 20. We conducted. I don't know what happened. There you are. We conducted the interviews, and it was a unanimous choice of the selection committee to recommend Jed to as the new emergency management director. Uh, Jed comes to us from Lake Delton, where he has been the emergency management coordinator for the last four years. Prior to that, Jed worked in the Wisconsin Dells Police Department for quite a few years. And then prior to that, he was actually in the Coast Guard. I mean, they say that's a branch of service, but I'm not sure. But oh. I don't know, Dell, is it a? <clears throat> it isn't a subsidiary of the <laughs> I'm just kidding, Dell. I'm just, uh, Dell is in the back, um, and, and I am thrilled to recommend him. Uh, it was unanimous from the committee to recommend Jed as our new emergency management director. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, on that note, we have a motion to approve all the appointments by Supervisor Klitsky, second by uh, Supervisor Carver. Is there any discussion on the motion before us? C 
seeing none, we will go ahead and vote on the appointments at this time. All in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Congratulations, everybody, and uh, congratulations, Jed. Welcome aboard. Failed by majority. Failed by majority. Yep, I shouldn't have been all right, that brings us up to item number 13. Uh, do we have any bills? No. Item 14, we have a claim for Gabe, from Gabriel Sowers. Uh, this is just for the purpose of presentation. It's a required process, but had a number of inquiries from supervisors um, about this, so I'll, uh, I'll, I'll ask uh, Corp Council to explain <coughs> the claim and what the process is. You're on. Oh. They have a different mic for you, even though it doesn't exist. Now it's on. Now it's on. All right. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Any more? So I have to have two buttons on for that mic to work. I can stand up and project my voice. Um, so we received a claim from Mr. Sowers regarding damage to his windshield that he claims was caused by one of the highway department trucks. Um, as all, with all claims, the, uh, I forwarded it on to our insurance company. They told us that we should disallow said claim. Uh, Mr. Sowers, uh, via email on Monday, yesterday, was made aware of um, what the county's decision was and that the county board would be voting tonight on disallowing his claim. He has indicated that he will, quote unquote, see us in court. So that's where the matter stands. Um, again, as it states in the notice of or the disallowance of claim, we will have to provide that to him via certified or registered mail. That will cut down the time period he has to bring that action in the circuit court. Mm -hmm. So that's where we stand at this point in time. As your lawyer, I would request that if you are contacted by Mr. Sowers, that you not discuss the matter with him as the threat of litigation is pending. And anything you say, I guess, can and will be used against you in the court of law. So that's where it is. And the resolution is coming up later in today's meeting. Alrighty. So we have next uh, item number 15, elections. Uh, we do not have any elections that I'm aware of. We have everybody jump away ahead on the screens here. And we have no proclamations. Under reports, information, no action required. Uh, do we have a report from the clerk? Uh, Administrator Miller. Thank you, Mr. Chair. First thing I want to do is apologize to the Healthcare uh, Board of Trustees. Um, I did not get the address for the appointment on the new one, and so it's not on there, but it will be next month. Um, so second thing I want to uh, say is I want to thank Jeff Jelnick for his 15 years of service to the people of Sauk County. I wish him the best in his retirement. Um, and I think everyone would agree that he did a, a phenomenal job here as our emergency government director. <laughs> um, next, I want to recognize Dep Deputy Aaron Brooks and Deputy Andrew Coolis for their life-saving um, activities that they had. Do you want me to pause, Mr. Chair? Uh, if you would, that'd be great. Uh, Supervisor Anderson, would you please come to the front of the room? Uh, we have a date with a judge. And tell him why he's late. Yeah, no, and I told everybody this is my fault that you're not here because I typed 6.30 in the email. Okay, so, so I wasn't losing it completely. And the good news is um, this may come as a bit of a surprise, but they actually voted for you. <laughs> you know, I was going to make one brief comment just when I was hoping to write off quietly into the sunset. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so if you would swap spots with the judge, he's going to administer your own. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Judge Scrine. Right. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Mike Anderson. I, Mike Anderson. Having been appointed to the office of Sauk County Supervisor. Having been appointed to the office of Sauk County Supervisor. District number nine in the county of Sauk. District number nine in the county of Sauk. Do solemnly swear or affirm. Do affirm. That I will support the Constitution of the United States of America. That I will support the Constitution of the United States of America. And the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. And the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. And will faithfully and impartially. And will faithfully and impartially. Discharge the duties of said office. Discharge the duties of said office. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. 
Congratulations. So Mike, once you sign that, swing down around to the end and you're in the second row on the end, you get to sit next to Supervisor Krieger. <laughs> <laughs> Your mom's here. <laughs> he bites. He bites. Yeah, he does actually. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Back to you. Um, so getting back to Deputy Brooks. On April 15, 2022, Deputy Brooks was in the changeover room with a male inmate. As part of the process, the inmate was to receive a shower. Deputy Brooks spoke with the inmate while the inmate was taking the shower as the two were visually separated for privacy reasons. After a while, Deputy Brooks noticed the inmate had taken his towel from the window ledge. Deputy Brooks asked if the inmate was uh, done about done and did not receive a response. Deputy Brooks looked into the shower to make sure the inmate was okay and found the inmate hanging from the shower curtain rod by the towel. Deputy Brooks radioed for assistance and entered the shower stall. Deputy Brooks managed to lift the inmate up to loosen the towel that was around the inmate's neck's neck. He then lowered the inmate to the ground and checked for signs of life. When the nurse arrived on scene, she took over care. The inmate was transported to a local hospital, evaluated, and later returned to the jail. It is without a doubt that if Deputy Brooks had not intervened when he did, the inmate would have died by hanging. So thank you, Deputy Brooks, for doing your job. On the eight, yes. <clears throat> On the evening of April 9th, Deputy Coolis responded to a residence in the village of West Baraboo for a report of a male who was reportedly trying to kill himself. Deputy Coolis arrived within minutes. Upon entry into the home, he observed the male subject standing in the living room sharpening a large kitchen knife. The deputy attempted to verbally persuade the subject to drop the knife, but was unsuccessful. The subject raised the knife towards his own neck, and Deputy Coolis deployed his taser. After the initially ineffective taser deployed, the subject turned to face Deputy Coolis. Deputy Coolis then observed the subject was actively cutting his own neck and throat with a knife. Deputy Coolis deployed a second taser cartridge, which was effective, and the subject stopped harming himself, dropped the knife, and was able to be secured in handcuffs. Deputy Coolis then began rendering first aid, which included applying pressure to the significant neck laceration. The in throughout this incident, the subject indicated an intent to harm himself and a desire to die. Deputy Coolis' intervention in this incident prevented the subject from harming himself any further. The cut had nearly struck arteries and other vital structures in the throat. Although the armed subject presented a potential threat to his own personal safety, the deputy chose to use an electronic control device in an attempt to stop and disarm the subject. The subject survived his injuries after receiving additional emergency medical care at the regional hospital. So two outstanding deputies and employees that we have at this county, and I think it's, it says a lot about all the, the county or the employees that we have here at the county. So. Um, the next thing I wanted to touch base on is uh, I, I'm fairly excited about this. For those new members on the board, um, Sauk County took the initiative with our Huber inmates and created a training program um, to train them. And we are going to be renting a we, we have rented a facility that they will be using. And the National Association of Counties has invited me to come and speak at the national conference to show how they were using ARPA funds to getting America to work, strategies for investing federal funding, in, using ARPA funds in community workforce development. ARPA is American Rescue Plan Act funds for those of you that are new to the board. So I, I will be speaking at the National Association of Counties in Colorado. Um, the, we will be talking about the process of rebuilding and retraining local work, workforces impacted by COVID-19 and using the ARPA funds as a key funding resource. Um, various funding streams will be also discussed on how fellow, fellow county leaders are braiding them together to invest in, in conducting jobs, retraining older workers, partnering with colleges, providing wraparounds. Those who will be speaking at the event are a representative from the White House, a, a commissioner from Seminole County, Florida, and a commissioner from Tulsa County, Oklahoma, who are the equivalent of county board supervisors. They just have a different name in those, those states. Uh, 
Dr. Rebecca Watts uh, from the Northwestern Governors University and Ron Painter, the president and CEO of the National Association of Workforces. The reason that the National Association of Counties found this, they found it actually in the Baraboo News Republic looking for information on how uh, ARPA funds had been used and they want to hear about Sauk County's <coughs> partnership with People Helping People, the Workforce Development Board of South Central Wisconsin to develop a training center for people and on work release, which will be trained by local uh, contractors and, <coughs> and local manufacturers. So that is a, a big thing and that is why you have a resolution on your agenda for the chair to attend. Uh, I thought I suggested to the chair, I didn't think it was appropriate that I go without a county board supervisor there because it was not, I was the conduit to bring it to you guys. You guys are the ones that voted on it, so kudos to you for that. Um, the next thing is we have started, and Dennis, I'm thrilled about this because it's, I've only been here almost two years and it seems like we've been working on it since before I got here, but they have started construction on the runways at the airport. Woohoo! I'm thrilled about it, um, and by September, end of September, they will actually be digging the ditch and getting the water part of it done um, at, the, at the airport, so that is huge. For those of you that don't know, right now, in that part of the county, through one of the employers down there, we bring in about $14 million in salaries alone to Sauk County. That airport plays a huge part in that, so that's all I have, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Under the chair's report, um, first of all, I, I just want to piggyback off of um, what Brent was saying about the people helping people. One, what, I think this is an awesome opportunity for us to showcase the work of Sauk County at the national level. But um, when I remember when it was actually Jared Pincus, I believe, brought Brent over to meet Bill Harris, and and he was so fired up by that. He was like, you've got to meet Bill Harris. And I was like, I've seen him at Broadstands. I've been dying to meet this guy. <laughs> so we went over and met with him. And I remember um, after a couple meetings, he just uh, he just looked at me and says, oh, I hate all this government stuff. Never, ha Nothing ever happens. It's always you politicians and lip service. And I looked and I said, Bill, we're going to get this done. And uh, here we are. So this is great. Thank you all for that. Um, so little learning lesson here. Um, so when, with, with Supervisor Anderson coming on, um, it, it turned out that Supervisor Roxon couldn't attend the meetings of the Board of Adjustment, so I attempted to appoint uh, Supervisor Anderson to that, where our sharp legal analyst, uh, Corp Counsel, pointed out to us that uh, under a state statute, a member of the Board of Adjustment actually cannot live in a municipal area which one lives in the city of Reedsburg, the other in the village of Lake Delton. So neither one of them can serve, can serve and that did not solve my problem. So I'm reaching out to you guys tonight. You don't need to, to, to contact me tonight, but go home and think it over. And if you would, uh, if, if you have a committee that say, let's say the time's not working out for you, uh, please let me know because uh, right now, uh, Supervisor Anderson has no committee assignments, which he actually said a light committee load is fine, but if we could get, <laughs> If we could get one for them, that's great. So if you have a committee, and I, that happened last term with Supervisor White Eagle. She couldn't make the meetings and I couldn't find anybody to swap with her. So if you have a meeting that's not working out, let us know and uh, we can talk to Supervisor Anderson and, and make that swap. And then, uh, yeah, you don't have to worry about going to board adjustment. You're, you're just done, man. <laughs> All right, so, and I, the only other thing I had, I congratulations, Supervisor uh, Birchall coming in uh, uh, like a terror. She went to her first uh, Wis the River Wisconsin, the Wisconsin River Rail Transit Commission, where she was elected the uh, third treasurer for the uh, organization. So if the first two die, she's up. <laughs> <laughs> but congratulations, Gal. <laughs> All right. I suppose if they can't attend the meeting, right? If that, right. <laughs> no, is that how it works? Okay. <laughs> and anyway, that's all I have this evening, folks. Let's uh, let's move on. Unless uh, there's anything else, somebody here has forgotten. Uh, yes, sir, Dr. Pepper. I'm not sure I want to yet. Are you ready? Yeah, I guess. Thank I you, am. Mr. Chairman. 
So who did you appoint to the Board of Adjustments? Show up on time, we'll tell you next time. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Supervisor uh, Mike Anderson, he's sitting uh, two rows in front of you, he just waved. You're welcome. I thought we were just talking about that. Was I wrong? Okay. okay. Just, just wake up. Oh, okay. <laughs> Item number 13, unfinished business. We have none. Brings us up to number uh, 19, new business, executive and legislative committee. First up, ordinance 7, 2022, an ordinance to amend the ordinance section 1.001, creating the final county supervisory district plan. Is that mine? With, oh yes, thank you, hang on. I'll get there. Um, we have a motion by Supervisor Plivka, second by Supervisor Rigo. Uh, before we go any further, I would like to point out what we would lovingly refer to as some Scribner errors, and we'd like to thank uh, Supervisor Birchall for uh, reporting and doing her due diligence. I will say that we, we were talking between Brent, Becky, myself. I don't know if we should include the lawyer guy in this, but we had a rough week. Um, <laughs> line 13 should say November 9th, 2021 instead of 2022. Same with line 26, it should read 21 instead of 22. And line 66 should say 22 and 21. So those are the Scribner errors. We'll accept them as am amendments to the resolution. And Supervisor Polivka, would you care to speak to your motion? Yes. Supervisor Regal. No, All righty, is there any discussion on resolution 7 2022? Seeing nobody in the queue, we will go ahead and vote on the resolution. You, uh, now, if he, your, your, your sole instructor here is the guy to your left. Um, at any time you need to phone a friend, just raise your hand. <laughs> you, may, you may vote on Ordinance 7 2022 at this time. All right. 31 in favor with nobody in opposition, no supervisors absent or excused or abstaining. That or resolution that ordinance passes brings us up to resolution 65 2022 to disallow the claim of Gabriel Sowers. We have motion by Supervisor Spencer, uh, second by Supervisor Shell. Supervisor Spencer, do you care to speak to your motion? Do I wake up Spencer? You would or would not? Would not. Okay. Supervisor Shell? No, thank you. Could somebody do me a favor before I forget? Can we get IT to switch this back? Um, okay, so any uh, supervisors care to speak or uh, raise any issues with this at this time? Supervisor Roxon. Um, I'm just curious, why are we disallowing it? I thought the claim seemed genuine. Um, it was on advice of our insurance company that we were doing that. Okay. So, yeah, we, we generally disallow all claims gotcha. that are made. I think we have to physically program it. <coughs> Oh, done? Do I hit that one? I'm done? Yeah, you don't have to do it right now. I just meant for the next meeting. I thought if you could easily just go tap, tap, tap. Okay, thank you. Did that answer your question, Supervisor Roxon? Yeah. All right, beautiful. All right. Uh, any other supervisors scared to speak to this resolution? Seeing nobody in the queue, you may vote on resolution 65 2022 at this time to disallow the claim of Gabriel Sowers. You may vote now. We have 30 supervisors in favor with one supervisor opposed. The resolution passes. That brings us to resolution 66, 2022 to permit the county board chair to travel out of state to a national association of counties event. One of them. Uh, we have a motion by supervisor Lohr, second by supervisor Gruber. And again, another Scribner's error. Uh, it should say 21st day of June, 2022 rather than June 2021, we'll accept that as corrected. Supervisor Lord, do you keep care to speak to your motion? Have a good time, Mr. Chair. Well, that's not the goal, but thank you. Thank you. Supervisor Gruber? I'm sorry, they messed me up so bad. Yes, sir? That was a one-way ticket, correct? <laughs> the one <-way. coughs> yes, sir. Okay, I was just checking. 
My wife asked it to be. <laughs> Do any other supervisors care to speak to the resolution before us? Seeing none, you have resolution 6622-2022. You may go ahead and vote on the resolution now. Thirty-one supervisors in favor with nobody in opposition and nobody absent or excused. That brings us up to Resolution 67-2022 to ratify the previous decisions of the Law Enforcement and Judiciary Committee when acting as two separate committees. Again, we have a Scrivener's error uh, that was caught. Uh, again, 20, uh, it should say the 7th day of June 2022 rather than 7th day of June 2021. We'll go ahead and accept that as a correction. And we have motion by Supervisor Carver and a second by Supervisor Dorner. Supervisor Carver, do you care to speak to the question? No, thank you, Mr. Chair. Supervisor Dorner. No, thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, is there anybody who cares to speak to the resolution before us? Seeing nobody in the queue, you have before you resolution 67 2022 to ratify the decisions of the Law Enforcement and Judiciary Committee. When, as, when acting as two separate committees. You may vote on the resolution at this time. We're still waiting for Bill. He's not here. He's not in the room, so. Oh, he, oh, he got a phone call. Here he comes. 31 in favor with nobody opposed and no supervisors absent or excused. The resolution is passed. That brings us on to the Finance Committee. You have before you Resolution 68-2022, signing funds as of December 31st, 2021, and amending the 2021 budget. We have a motion by Supervisor Krieger, second by Supervisor Klitsky. Supervisor Krieger, do you care to speak to your motion? I do, I'll try to make it brief. First of all, this is a annual exercise, and but because we are amending the budget requires a, a two thirds uh, approval. Um, it's really three pronged. One uh, takes care of the of transfers from the contingency fund, and this is the very reason we have a contingency fund uh, to uh, for those departments that over exceed their budget uh, for the previous year. Um, and by our, by our finance policy, uh, the, as soon as they know that there's the possibility, uh, the committee, the department has the responsibility to uh, report that possibility to finance and all of, all of the three departments listed made us well aware of the problem as soon as they knew that it might exist. The second prong of this is uh, for departments that exceed their expenditure limits of their budget, but this has been covered by grants and other sources of revenue. And you'll find those listed on page two of the resolution. But probably one of the things that, uh, especially for the new members, that uh, is important to the Finance Committee is the paragraph that uh, spares, spells out that within, when the board voted to, um, to go ahead with the new highway building projects, um, it borrowed $45 million, but um, we recognize that if the cost exceeds uh, that we are willing to spend up to $50 million collectively on those buildings, the other $5 million, um, and for the new supervisors, this may make little sense, but we exceeded um, our sales tax revenue by roughly $2.5 million last year. And so at the end of the year, that excess got transferred into the general fund. But we wanted to make sure that we took that excess sales tax revenue from last year, and if we did exceed 45 million on these buildings, that it would be paid for, uh, that overage would be, that excess of 45 million would be covered by the sales tax revenue, and then the other would come from the existing fund balance. So there's a total of $5 million that we are going to take, up to $5 million to take out of fund balance to fund up to $50 million on, on this project. Um, and I hope I've, hope I've made some sense trying to explain that with sales tax went into the, it, it, every year it goes in to fund balance. 
So we don't have a separate we don't have a separate account for sales tax revenue exceeded. It all goes in the fund balance. Thank you. Thank you. Supervisor Klitschke, do you care to speak to your second? No, thank you, Mr. President. Are there any other supervisors who care to speak to the question before us at this time? Seeing nobody in the queue, you have before you resolution 68 2022, assigning funds as of December 31st, 2021, and amending the 2021 budget. You may vote on the resolution now. So we have th 31 supervisors in favor. It required a two thirds vote, so it is passed with nobody in opposition. That brings us up to item number C, Land Resources and Environment Committee, Resolution 69-2022 to reward a contract for design and engineering services for the horse campground at White Oak, or White Mound County Park, found on pages 38 through 39. Motion by Supervisor Spencer, Bob, and not the other one, and seconded by Supervisor Polipka. Supervisor Spencer, do you care to speak to your motion? No, thank you, Chairman. Supervisor Polifka, do you care to speak to your second? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. This is pretty much self-explanatory. Uh, the uh, staff, along with the county, is uh, has plans to improve and campground at White Mound, and that's what the services are for. Thank you. Are there any uh, supervisors who care to speak to the resolution before us? Seeing nobody in the queue, you have before you resolution 69-2022 to award a contract for design and engineering services for the horse campground at White Mound Park. You may vote on the resolution at this time. We have 31 in favor with nobody in opposition, nobody abstaining. Resolution is passed. That brings us on to Ordinance 8, 2022, an amendment to approve a map amendment, rezoning of lands in the town of Greenfield, from Resource Conservancy to a Commercial Zoning District filed upon State Road 113 LLC. Property owner Michelle Gillette, registered agents. We have a motion by Supervisor Terry Spencer, seconded by Supervisor Kinsman. Supervisor Spencer, do you care to speak to your motion? I do not, Mr. Chair. I'll let Mr. Kinsman talk to it. Supervisor Kinsman, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, this is basically uh, just a business. We're just kind of bringing it uh, up to date. Um, they developed it, and it's in proper zoning for what it is. Okay. Are there any other supervisors who care to speak to the uh, ordinance amendment at this time? Seeing nobody in the queue, you have before you Ordinance 8, 2022, approving a map amendment in the town of Greenfield, filed by property owner Michelle Gillette. You may go ahead and vote now. 31 supervisors in favor with nobody in opposition or abstaining. The ordinance is adopted. Brings us up to resolution 70 2022 from land resources to authorize participation in the state of Wisconsin off highway motorcycle trail grant program. Is there a, a, a motion on this item? Motion by Supervisor Kinsman. Second by Supervisor McAuliffe. Supervisor Kinsman, do you care to speak to your motion? Uh, no, thank you. It's pretty self-explanatory. Okay. Supervisor McAuliffe. This is an annual um, action. It just gives us permission to get the funds for this. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other supervisors who care to speak to the resolution before us at this time? Seeing nobody in the queue, you have resolution 70-2022 authorizing participation in the state of Wisconsin off-highway motorcycle trail gro grant program. You may vote on the resolution now. We have 31 supervisors in favor with nobody in opposition or abstaining. The resolution is adopted. From the Land Resources Environment Committee and Finance Committee, you have before you resolution 71-2022 to amend the 2022 LRE budget to include funding for a stream bank project at the county farm. Motion by Supervisor Krieger, second by Supervisor Kinsman. Supervisor Krieger, do you care to speak to your motion? I do. Um, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Um, 
I, I think there are two important parts to this, and, and the first is that this is a result of a water quality discharge agreement that the county entered into, I believe, in 2020 with the village of Loganville. Uh, as part of that, uh, the village of Loganville had to seek out constituents uh, or property owners that would help, uh, that, would, that they could work with to reduce the phosphorus load on their plant. Um, they came to the to the county knowing that uh, we had a stream bank project on our county farm. This this is the former site of the Sauk County Health Care Center that we still own. Uh, for those of you uh, that are new to the board, uh, this uh, the former board adopted the master plan for that acreage um, in, in the last term, and. This stream bank project and the improvement was identified in that plan. And so the second part I think that is important is that um, there was no doubt that we should do the project. It is where the funds should come from. It was suggested at one point that we use ARPA funding, uh, both the LRE committee and the finance committee um, unanimously um, unanimously approved taking it out of out of our fund balance, being the fact that we had identified this plan, so therefore it was no surprise to us, and so that uh, if ARPA funds were not available, um, the general fund balance would have been used, and so that is what this resolution stipulates. Thank you. Thank you. Supervisor Kinsman, do you care to speak to your second? Uh, no, thank you. Marty described it well. Okay, thank you. Supervisor Flint, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I have no problem with the actual uh, uh, resolution itself. The funding is the issue that I have. Uh, I have deep respect for the committee work that we do. Uh, it's a breath of fresh air over what we had a couple of terms ago. Uh, that said, I was on the village board in Linden Station. I was a former mayor, and every dollar was tough to come by. Uh, this resolution asks that Loganville basically pays two-thirds of the cost of uh, this project uh, to the tune of $153,000, uh, and the county would pay approximately $50,000. I'm sorry, would uh, the county would pay uh, uh, $102,000, i am sorry, and let me back off here. The cost to the county would have been $50,665. The remaining $102,000 would be paid by the village of Loganville. I would propose uh, a friendly amendment that the funding for this project uh, be 50-50, that the village of Loganville is taking on quite a hit. Uh, this is a small town with uh, little or no prospects of growing, and that's an awful hit for, for a small town. And I would ask that because the entire uh, stream bank is on county uh, land, uh, that uh, a 50-50 spread uh, would be better, and that would result in the county funding 76765 and the village of Loganville the same figure. Say the a number friendly again. amendment I would like to propose that, please. 776. 76765. Okay, so we have a motion to amend the resolution to uh, by Supervisor Flint, second by uh, Supervisor Pepper, uh, to amend uh, the motion to read 50-50 uh, exchange with each, uh, the county in Loganville being responsible for $76,765, and lawyer guys got some for us. I guess with the line numbers here, I think we should, for before the clerk gets mad at us. Thank you. <laughs> um, figure out what the line, what the, the actual amendment should be based on line the line 30. numbers. So I think looking at that, um, it should read on line 28 should read the county of no more than 50% of the overall estimated project costs. The estimated cost will go to line 29. That doesn't change to the 153. This result in the cost uh, line 30 would then be amended to um, 50665 would be amended to $76,765, and then the $102,866 would be amended to 
seven hundred and sixty-five dollars. So I think those. those Respectfully, uh, Councillor, for line forty-two also. Well, I haven't read down that far. All right. Yes, and then you are correct, sir. Line forty-two needs to be changed. the The dollar amount needs to be changed to seventy-six seven sixty-five. And then I don't. Let me keep scrolling. Nope, I think we're good. There's nothing in the fiscal impact about those numbers. So, okay. So, Supervisor uh, Flynn, I believe you spoke to your motion. Supervisor Pepper, did you want to speak to your second on the amendment? No, I'm good. Okay, so we do have some supervisors in the queue. Uh, we did. They all disappeared. All right. <laughs> oh, they're back. Uh, well, oh, because probably because of the amendment, they reset the queue. The old queue went away. New queue is up. Supervisor Polifka, you have the floor. Oh, wait, I got to get over here in the... You're up. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <laughs> I appreciate... Uh, what Supervisor Flint is saying and that, but I think we also have to take into consideration here uh, that many of the municipalities within our county have to pick up the full load. And are we going to be willing to uh, tell these other municipalities that uh, we'll go 50-50 on their phosphorus plans? Thank you. Uh, Supervisor Detter, you have the floor. Thank you. Um, so per this, they have allowed the limit to go past the agreement somehow? Um, so it, would it be all right if I kind of paused? Lisa, would you like to explain the history on this? I'll bring up. Uh, I reserve Lisa. the rest of my three minutes. You betcha. I'll I've paused it, I'll save it. <laughs> so the history is this. The Loganville needed to get their WPDS permit. When they received their WPDS permit, most, most um, water treatment facilities have found that their phosphorus levels that they can discharge have decreased significantly, which means that they either have to upgrade the facility um, enter into what we call the MDV funding that we receive or do water quality training. So they worked with one engineer that kind of determined the water quality trading route was the best for them. So they reached out to us. We came to some kind of an agreement. The issue is, is that Loganville is not a very wealthy community. Obviously, they're very small. So we identified four potential projects. And all four of those projects would have to be completed in order to meet the requirements of the permit and one of those is the county farm. Um, so Loganville reached back out to us and asked if there was a way for us to kind of help them since it's on our property. And that's when we came back to um, the LRE committee and the finance committee to kind of have that discussion. So I guess I'm confused. Is it our fault for having too much phosphorus coming into the system? Or is it their fault for not handling the right amount of phosphorus? No, it's just that the permit systems have changed. So, I mean, okay. I can tell you, I was an administrator for a community. We had a WPDS permit renewal, and our phosphorus level as well was supposed to decrease, and we had to kind of make that choice. And that's based upon the DNR's um, TMDLs, so the pr they review kind of the phosphorus limits that are already in the water and then determine what you're allowed to discharge. So it's no, really nobody's fault. It's just that the permit requirements change, which then trigger all of these <coughs> municipalities to either make changes to their facilities to meet those permit requirements or kind of do something different. In short, they changed the rules. Yes. But, I mean, it's always somebody's fault. <laughs> I mean, well, the DNR. <laughs> they changed the standards. So is the, is the preponderance of the weight of the problem on us or Loganville or what? It's on the preponderance of nobody necessarily. Yeah. It's, it wasn't a problem that they created. So. so the DNR determines those limits. I mean, we really don't have any say when they come in to review our facility and give you the permit. Those are just the limits you're required so in to So in any other thing in, in land, everything's always grandfathered in. So the state should pick this up or what? Yeah, there's no grandfathering when you're talking <laughs> about WPDS permits. You know, th if this were something like a landowner had, I'm just going to use this because I'm familiar with the current situation, 
a culvert that wasn't meeting their needs, but it was handling our needs as a county, we would just say, you can spend that money because it's not meeting your needs, but it's meeting our needs. In this case, as a county, what are we really responsible for? I mean, I want to help Loganville if that's what we're supposed to do, but I also don't want to be irresponsible to the rest of the taxpayers on setting a precedent that this is or is, I'm just trying to get where are we, where are we on our responsibility thing here. If it's 50-50, I'll take it. If it's all of our fault or all of our responsibility because it's on our land, I'll take it. But I think right now we are setting a precedent that the next county or uh, community can come in and go, well, you did this. So I want to know, what do we got, what are we talking about here? Be, somebody be more clear than other than they move the goalpost and we got to just deal with it. Please. That, that unfortunately you. is kind of the answer. So the, the DNR sets the permit requirements. And because all of these facilities discharge into the waters of the state, which are the lakes, streams, rivers, that's kind of where the DNR gets the authority to kind of set those permit limits. So once they set the permit limits, these facilities are struggling. So Reedsburg did MDV because they can't afford to make all the necessary changes to the facility. I mean, they're just kind of stuck. So it's not only the county's fault, it's not really Loganville's fault. It's Loganville opted to work with the county for water quality trading, and one of the projects we identified in their watershed just happens to be on the county farm. Does that kind of make sense? It, I think it makes about as much sense as it's gonna. We would be working with the farmer and, and expecting them to you know, make some change. Would it be more forceful? <laughs> yeah, I mean, no. that's part of it, right? I, I mean, mean, when we work with a farmer for conservation type practices, we offer cost share. We offer cost share. I can't wait for Dr. Pepper's answer on this. Okay, so uh, we, we've run out of time. Thank you. But I gave, uh, I did give him a little extra time because we engaged in some back and forth. Dr. Pepper, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I represent the Loganville area and I wasn't aware of any of this. I was not notified. I just went 90 through 96 emails and not one email was sent to me about this. So that's a little bit disturbing. So I'm a little bit blindsided here. I'm glad that Mr. Flint proposed a 50% split because Loganville has limited funds. Yeah, Doc, uh, Supervisor Pepper, I, I don't mean to scream foul on this, but we are all provided this Granicus system to monitor uh, committee but actions. Normally, when something comes through LRE, I get notifications when it's in my district. When it's a land use application, this is a little different. This is a little different. This is a little different. This has more money to going through it. That may be, but under state statute, under land use for zoning issues, there's a notification requirement. Nobody told me this before tonight either. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm always oh. glad to help whenever well, I can. Well, you're, you're, you're too helpful sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Super so I'm just, oh. I'm just thankful that Mr. Flint proposed this. I would encourage people to vote yes on this amended portion of the resolution. Thank you. I'm going to be pushing the wrong screen all night long. Th these were the other... Uh, this yesterday morning, they were this way. All right, Supervisor Gruber, you have the floor. Oh. Uh, Fordham? No, I thought me. two was on. No, no. Oh. Uh, where's Joan? There you are, Joan. Don't kick. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Can you um, or somebody confirm for me that $26,000 is not going to have a financial um, un unanticipated impact? I know it says coming out of the general fund, but I don't like to make that kind of a change unless I know we have um, adequate funds to do it. We have approximately $11 million in the unassigned fund balance right now. Thank you. Supervisor Prosser. Just a question for clarification, since uh, Supervisor Krieger refers to all of us as new every time, so I just, you know, trying to understand the process. So Mr. F uh, Supervisor Flint was on, is on the committee that signed this to approve it. 
as it was. So I'm wondering if there was a discussion at, and unless, was there a discussion about this resolution in the committee and then you signed it and agreed to it and then you changed your mind at the board? I just, I'm just trying to figure out how the process works. There was actually discussion and if it would be all right with the body, Supervisor Krieger actually chairs both committees and would have the best story to tell. Yes. Um, if I push the right button, you're thanks, on. Thanks for the opportunity because I wanted to correct these. As I said in my statement, this both the the end result or the end motion, the last motion was unanimously approved by both committees. I can tell all supervisors present that uh, they're, in fact, I believe uh, at the LRE committee that I suggested that we do 50% and uh, that uh, that amount uh, was reduced to 33%. I can tell you that I believe one of the contributing factors in that reduction from 50% to 33% was the fact that um, while we had identified this project in the master plan that um, we were actually honoring the Village of Loganville's request to move this up in priority with the county to do it before the other three private landowners in order to placate the DNR that the, that actually that the Village of Loganville was making progress on this effort. And so actually, you know, that's why it's here tonight. If, but for the request from the Village of Loganville, you would not be seeing this tonight. But I can tell you that we started at 50%. Um, it uh, went down to 33% at the LRE committee and that amount was unanimously forwarded to finance. The 50% level was discussed at finance. I believe the motion to set it at 50% failed on a, a 2-4, 3 against motion. And so the then the subsequent motion of taking the recommendation from LRE was unanimously forwarded to this body with the knowledge that Supervisor Flint intended to introduce the amendment as he has on, on the floor tonight. Thank that, you. Did you, uh, that answer your question, Bob? Yes. Supervisor Kinsman. Uh, thank you. Uh, I think Marty described what, a lot of what I was gonna say. Um, the other thing is, I mean, as, as Murray said, there are some other private projects because our project will not uh, meet the requirement that they need for the phosphorus loading. Um, and they're actually getting that funding mostly from EQIP and then the village is kicking in the portion that EQIP doesn't cover. So we're kind of doing the same thing with the village in that um, case. Uh, and. I think the committee really wanted to see that the village had a fair bit of skin in the game um, because we do have other municipalities on these watersheds and we want to make sure that, you know, they're paying their fair share. We understand that everybody's, you know, cut for funds, but, you know, if another, another, you know, project should present itself from another community, we would like to be able to, you know, for the parity to be able to do, you know, work with them as well in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Supervisor Lohr. Yeah, I'll make this brief. I, I just wanted to touch base on, for the, the, the LRE department just finished a master plan for this farm. And I, I, I think it's really important that everyone understands that in the master plan, in the long term, this money was going to get spent to improve this project anyways. So as Marty said, all we're doing is, is bumping it up. I am the one that made the motion to uh, move it from 50% to 33%. Uh, that motion did pass. Uh, my reasoning was, I, I think, based on the premise that we were going to spend this money anyways, eventually, I think it's a good move, both for the you know the for Loganville and and for the county, uh, but I, I felt personally that 50% was too high, and um, 
I, I, I think you know it was a fair move to, to drop it down to 33%. Uh, that motion did pass. With that said, the arguments that I have heard uh, this evening, while I fully understand them, uh, are basically the the village of, of Loganville does not have the you know a, a big big fund to, to do this, and I and I get that, but I also I, I don't know how well that argument sits with you know the, the taxpayers of, of you know District 26. We in my view we can't make bigger donations to, you know, for arguments that are in, in just, what am I trying to say? I'm trying to say it's, it's, it's too much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Supervisor Thielen. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I've been listening to this back and forth and I find that, that it, to some extent it boils down to what's gonna get it done. And um, if we go with the 33% or the 35, yeah, I think 33% that's, that's accountable to the, to, the, uh, to the county, it sounds kind of punitive to Loganville. I don't have, I, I, don't, I don't know if they can afford it. It doesn't sound like they can. So what's gonna happen is it probably won't get done. And, um, and, so I think as we go around the county and as we look at types of, of issues like this, that I think that we have to be individualistic and we have to look at it and w what is it gonna take to get it done and that it get it done properly. And um, my sense is, um, whereas before I was uh, 33 made sense, I think probably 50% is probably going to be a lot more palatable to Loganville and to, um, in, in, in order to get this accomplished. Thank you. Thank you. Supervisor Dorner, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, question, or correct me if I'm wrong, I had a couple of items. Um, Sauk County is under no obligation to assist with this project at all. It's basically Loganville's problem and if we decide not to help them they're still going to be even though the project is on our property they would still be liable for the whole cost of the project uh, Lisa why did you go sit down does that look comfortable back there <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. Yeah. So as part of the water quality trading agreement, we did offer technical assistance to help design some of these projects and then help facilitate the discussions, I guess, with the landowners that are involved. So we do have some skin in the game, I guess, just due to that water quality trading agreement. Do any of the other potential projects, do they, so if these other projects are on private property, then the, the cost of those projects would be between the village of Loganville and the, the landowner. Owner. Yes. All right. And then my second point is the, this project that's on the on our property on the county farm property was that identified as a project that we were going to do before Loganville request Loganville's request to use it as a way to reduce their phosphorus. Load. Well, as everybody's kind of mentioned, it's been a part of the discussions to go into the master plan for the county <coughs> farm, was to do something with this stream bank so that it could serve as kind of an example to other farmers that may have stream banks or whatever on their property. But so it's I always kind of been the idea that that happened. It was just identified as a project because it happens to be in the watershed, happens to be on our property. The DNR wants to see something happen now to show that they're going to meet their permit requirements. So this is kind of an easy, an easier one in comparison, I guess, to the other three. So even without Loganville's request or need, we were gonna do this project on our property anyway. Yes, it's point. identified in the county's master plan for okay. the county farm. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Supervisor Gruber. So, and I, before you run back there, Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> 
Would you like a chair up here? No, that's all right. So in other terms, if we decide to give nothing, they would have to pay the full amount and take care of that to do the project, correct? They would. I mean, they, okay. they have to pick the number of projects that are going to meet the permit okay. requirements to reduce the phosphorus. So if we were going to do it and we were planning it in our master plan, we were planning with the resources we already have, because some of it we can cover ourselves, but with our own labor, so to speak, the 33% that you guys kind of pulled out is what probably is what we may have spent on a project such as that or what the project we're going to do in the future? No, I mean, the project in the future is going to be... Like Would still be that amount? Yeah, okay. if not more, because I think the stream bank is a little longer than, yet than that. Okay. So we have a little ways further yet to go. Okay. Last but not least, us giving 50% of the rest, um, Brent or Brian, will that put us on the hook with other municipalities if this is to come up with them and us having to look at it and say well past practice is we gave this here's what i can say there's there's legal precedent that you must follow when you're in court or in, in you know giving legal opinions and things of that nature and then there's political precedents which that that boils down to who's sitting in these 31 chairs when the next project comes up that's probably the best answer i can give you Supervisor uh, Lombard. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, as I listen to this, I'm inclined to agree with the administrator. And I, I do believe this is going to set a precedent for future projects, not just this year or next year, but for the next whatever many years with, mis with municipalities. And I believe it will be at least partly political. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Supervisor Pepper, this will be your second time, so I'm going to go to Supervisor Regal. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I have a question. As far as another municipality coming to us for a request, would we not have the argument that it was already in our master plan and a project that was going to be done? The, the, thank you, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Supervisor Ebro. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think there's another aspect to this that we, we ought to take a look at, and this has been an ongoing conversation in the Finance Committee, and it's about the ARPA money. And, uh, Supervisor Thielen said, well, if we don't help them, will this not get done? Uh, every community has gotten this ARPA money, and they're all sitting there saying, where is the priority? And we've had the same discussion at the county as to how much ARPA money did we want to contribute to other, other projects. Everybody can find a project. But if you're, if you're a town or village, whatever, I don't know what could be more important than this kind of water control thing, and you're going to have to get it done. So I don't know what the village, the village of Loganville is doing with their ARPA money and how they're prioritizing, how they employ it. But it would seem to me this is almost like an indirect subsidizing of their ARPA money. So this is something they've got to do. I'm sure when they initially planned this project, they never dreamt that they would get an ARPA award. Nobody did. It wasn't on the, on the horizon. But if we, if we want to do this sort of thing, um, I think we have to be very careful because we are, in fact, helping them preserve that grant for some other purpose when, in fact, they have a, a, a purpose that's this important. Uh, I certainly understand uh, Supervisor Flint's motivations, but uh, I do think it's a bigger question and a bigger issue. And as I said, this is something the Finance Committee has been kicking around for probably a year. We just all got our money this week, the second installment of, of ARPA, and I don't have any idea how much Loganville got or what they're going to do with it or whatever. But that certainly is a bonanza for all of us, and uh, I just don't think we should be stepping in to do this. I do think the 33% was... The, the village of Loganville received $31,191 and some change. <laughs> I just looked it up. Thank you. But I, I do think that that is a consideration. 
that's that's the box we're opening. Help them out so they can use their ARPA money for something else. Thank you. <clears throat> Before I recognize the supervisor in the second round, um, I, I normally I would go there to debate. I'm I'm not attempting to debate, but I am trying to hopefully offer a little clarity. And I'm not. Uh, you can take it for what it's worth. We we've had issues with how do we open up this Pandora's box of supporting communities along the route. Thank you. Hey, look, I had an idea. No. Um, <laughs> so so it, it's been an issue, and, and we don't want to create this, this working environment where all of a sudden we're bailing people out of other problems. So part of the problem with this situation is, is we've, we've got this, store, this, this, this bank project that we're planning to do whether or not Loganville has this issue, okay? So if the county decides that they're going to do this, the beneficiary will in fact be Loganville, but I think you can separate the idea that we're not doing it for Loganville, because whether we do it now or whether we do it five years from now, we will have to do it. So the question would be, do we do it or don't we do it? And, and the question then is how much? And that's, that's up to you guys, have fun. Is there anybody who hasn't spoken in the first round that would like to? Seeing that nobody has, uh, Supervisor Pepper, you have the floor for the thank second you, round. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Your explanation was very good. In three, four, five years, if this does not pass and the county decides to stream bank the county farm, who pays for that then and at what cost? You do. The taxpayers. Oh, no, you. <laughs> no, no. All right. I'll vote no on that motion. No, it's, it's, all, it's all counties. So actually, we're not helping Loganville as much as Loganville's helping the county if we pay 50%. We sure as heck shouldn't hang them on the hook for 70 or 66%. I just think that's wrong. And did Loganville agree to a certain amount? I don't know the answer to that. They have not. Well, I don't know how we can vote on something if we don't have all the facts. But you don't, I we're not required to do that. Uh, Marty, you, you do have the answer, no. Supervisor Krieger? When, uh, when this was brought to LRE committee, and um, I'm, I think I'm correct in this, and Lisa will correct, correct me if I'm not, but um, the presentation by Mr. Muko, uh, who is a consultant for the village of Loganville, uh, he did not have a figure for the for the county that he did not have a specific specific ask of the county. There was no dollar amount that was presented. Am I correct, Lisa? Okay, thank you. So I still have the floor. Well, okay. Yeah, I did. Uh, so just to reiterate that, the county isn't bailing Loganville out as much as Loganville is paying for half of the stream <coughs> banking for the county, and we're getting it done five years in advance. Thank you. Thank you. I know you did have the floor. I was just teasing. Supervisor Detter, you're up. Thank you. Um, I'm just going to state this for all future arguments about one district not wanting to pay for something uh, when Supervisor Lohr suggested District 26 might not be interested in this expenditure. I'm quite positive District 25 which includes Loganville, has paid for things all over the county, which doesn't directly benefit District 25. We are responsible for water all over the county, and if this was a project we were gonna take on anyway, I think the optics is to look like a true partner and not like a, uh, a back seat helping you a little bit here, so. Um, I really didn't know what the right answer was when this all started, but I, I feel like our responsibility is a little more obvious than 33%. Thank you. Supervisor Dorner. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just wanted to uh, piggyback a little bit on what Supervisor Regal said in that um, th really the only reason that we're having this conversation tonight and this resolution is before us is because this project is on our property. It's on the county's property. And so 
I don't think we're setting a lot of political uh, precedents because unless another project in the future comes up like this that's on our, uh, on our property, I don't think it's, we're obligated or have any precedents at all to pay for anything like this in the future. And I would also like to uh, agree with Supervisor Pepper that, uh, yeah, basically we're getting Loganville to pay for half of the cost of our stream bank, bank project on our property. Thank you. Thank you. First of all, I see nobody else in the queue, and congratulations, it's the first time in a long time we've gone to the second round, so <laughs> that was exciting. <laughs> Seeing no other supervisors in the queue, what we have before us now is the motion to amend, and the motion is to amend the 2022, so what we're going to do is the motion is to amend the original. So. The original is two thirds. The motion is to mention it to divide to amend the resolution to be 50 50 split between the county, $76,765 for a county, same for the village of Loganville. So once you vote on the amendment, then that would amend the original and we would vote on the other. If you don't amend it, then we still vote on the first one. But we, that's where we're at. Does everybody understand that? Piece of cake. All right, so the motion to amend is before you. Yes means you are in favor of doing the 50-50 split. No means you are not. You may vote on the amendment now. This only requires a 50%. So it is 23 supervisors in favor with eight supervisors in opposition. The resolution is amended. I will allow Michelle a second to cue this up. You now have before you an amended resolution. Uh, we do have an opportunity to continue debate if you so choose. Otherwise, uh, we will vote on the motion as amended. And to somebody's point, this does now require a two-thirds vote because we are amending the budget. Supervisor Pepper. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So when does the stream banking process start if we approve this? This summer yet? I do not have the answer for that. Lisa? All right. Thank you. Supervisor Dietrich, would you like to debate from your chair, please? Thank you, Mr. Chair. We can talk about percentage, but I'd rather talk about simply the dollar amount, which was 26,000 and some change uh, for 40 minutes. Uh, yeah, there's, uh, there's questions as to whether or not, you know, Loganville could afford it or, you know, what they're going to use their, their ARPA fund money for. I, um, I felt we spent a lot of time on, on something where uh, we had a capability of, of helping out a municipality where if they would divert their ARPA project, ARPA money to, to other projects, uh, you know, uh, the, you know, when we think about the floods in 2008 and 2018, Laval and uh, Rock Springs, and to a certain extent, Reedsburg got a lot of coverage. But Lo Loganville got flooded too. Uh, so, you know, there's, you know, they could use that money to address the, uh, the phosphorus issue. They could use it to address uh, flooding in the years to come. Uh, and, and again, I'm. You know, I, I, I think we could get hung up on the percentage, but I, I, I prefer to get hung up on the dollar amount, which is 26 and some change. Uh, this is money well spent uh, in, a, in a very reasonable and compassionate sense uh, for, uh, for, for a farming village. Thank you, uh, Supervisor Dietrich. Do other, <laughs> this is too many are. Are there any other supervisors who care to speak to the resolution before us? Seeing nobody in the queue at this time, you have resolution 71 2022 to amend the 2222 22 budget, and that is an amended uh, resolution reflecting a 50 50 share of proceeds funding a stream bake project at the farm. Remember, this does require a two thirds vote. You may vote on the amended resolution at this time.
Well, how about that? 31 in favor, nobody in opposition. The resolution has passed as amended. That brings us up to, I gotta figure out where I'm at here. Property, Property Committee Resolution 72 2022 authorizing a three year contract with GLS Utility LLC to be the fiber locating service for Sauk County. We have a motion by Supervisor Gruber, second by Supervisor Rigo. Somehow, um, there we go. That was like smooth as in the queue. I don't know how he got there. <laughs> we, Supervisor motion, uh, Supervisor Gruber, do you care to speak to your motion? Sure, we had lost um, our last locating service had notified us that they no longer were be servicing us um, due to the size of our, our uh, county or our system, I should say. So they went out for bids and this was the bid that came in the best for Sauk County. Thanks. Thank you, Supervisor Rigo, do you care to speak to your second? All right, does any other supervisor care to speak to resolution 72 2022 at this time? Seeing nobody else in the queue, you have before you resolution 72 2022, authorizing a three year contract with GLL, GLS Utility LLC to be the fiber locating service for Sauk County. You may vote on the resolution now. Thirty-one supervisors in favor, with nobody in opposition and nobody abstaining or excused. The resolution is passed. Item number twenty: Do we have any referrals? That is a no. Item number twenty-one: Any new agenda items? Please submit them in writing or by email. Any new business items to the county administrator as soon as possible for board rule. Item number twenty-two: Motion by Shell, second by Staley, to adjourn. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you, folks. Good meeting.